Hello, I'm Austin Heyman. Welcome to Seniors Today, a monthly program produced by the Commission on Aging and devoted entirely to issues and interests of Montgomery County seniors. This month we learn about the results of the Commission's summer study group on caregiving. And we offer you a treat, literally, by having a nationally known chef and author bring some pastry treats and advice right here into the studio. But our first topic today is the STEM Volunteer Program. The acronym STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And the purpose of the program is to bring technical and scientific adults into our county classrooms to help students achieve science, technology, engineering, and math literacy in their high school studies. And joining me to tell us more are Michael Neal, a science teacher at Sherwood High School, and Robert Thomas, the Montgomery County team leader for the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the STEM volunteer program. Well, welcome to Seniors Today. Hi. Hi, Austin. So you have been involved with this program for a number of years. What, tell us a little bit how it operates. Okay, um, I've been involved in the program since 2008, and um, we are a group of retired and semi-retired STEM professionals uh, who volunteer our time in the public schools in Montgomery County to give the students a real-world perspective of science. Um, there are, in the, in the DC region, we have about 120 volunteers. Um, I just handle the Montgomery County volunteers, and I have approximately 50 who I've placed in elementary, middle, and high schools in the county. What was your background in science? I'm an analytical chemist by profession. I worked 25 years for um, a large instrument manufacturer uh, mm. that, did, uh, that did laboratory instrumentation. Wow. So that's my background. Okay. And, and Michael, you have a, you're, you're a teacher at, at Sherwood. I teach chemistry. So how does this work into your classroom? Well, we're trying to, one of my goals is to show how chemistry can be applied in real, real day mm. situations. And it it's, uh, was introduced to me by my um, resource teacher at the time, Jim Douglas, that there's some volunteers uh, that would like to come into the classroom and work with me in some mm. capacity. And so I thought, oh, well, let's try this. And it, it turned out to be a wonderful collaborative relationship to show how chemistry can apply in a variety of ways that even I was unaware of. Um, you know, using Rob's tech uh, background. So, so how often is this? Once a week, or um, yeah, most of our volunteers actually commit one day a week for the entire school year. I, I think that's the big difference mm -hmm. about our program. But a whole it, day, actually, a whole school yes, year. Yes, it's a whole day, and some of our volunteers do more than one mm -hmm. day. They might do two or three days. And um, in fact, it's actually uh, not a year at the high school, but it also operates at the elementary. Right? Yes, um, I support Mike at Shoe at high school. But we have uh, we have many volunteers yeah. who go into elementary schools and middle schools. Pardon me, I just want to. I think Rob, don't you also volunteer at some on other schools as well? Yes, I actually um, I actually do uh, a middle school also. Mm -hmm. I I am the coach of the Science Olympiad team mm -hmm. at North Bethesda Middle School. In addition okay. to my shoe with high guy. <laughs> so how does that work with your curriculum? I mean, uh, well, it, yeah, that can be a challenge sometimes because a lot of the standards based teaching require a lot of assessment preparation and it does take time out of that to kind of allow Rob to come in and, and, and give a talk. Now other volunteers may do other things. Um, it, for us it worked out that he would give a weekly talk on a specific topic um, but it does take a little bit of time and preparation to make sure that the kids are prepared for this. It's not just a sit back and study hall type thing but they need mm -hmm. to be engaged and there's ways for that. So there has to be a teacher commitment. Not every yeah. teacher gets it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you got to um, have the support from your resource teacher mm -hmm. and ideally your principal as well right. to have these opportunities. Um, so give me an example of something that you've done recently. OK. Um, well, this is my fifth year in the program, and we have fine-tuned uh, the program um, over the past five years. Um, what I do at Sherwood High School, I basically talk about the real world applications of chemistry. And in particular, uh, some aspect of chemistry that might have appeared in the media, in the newspaper, on the internet. So we take topics, um, you know, like chemical weapons, which is, which is in the media a lot nowadays. Um, 
with, you know, with Syria, uh, we take that and we expand the topic to talk about what are chemical weapons, how do they work, etc. And we've done that with many topics over the years. Conflict think minerals, I think, is one. Yeah, conflict minerals, fracking, nuclear energy. Wow, that's uh, terrific. Mm. Yeah, so we, you know, we try to find stuff that's topical that's going to engage the students. And then also, uh, my job is to connect it to the curriculum. It's, it's, you know, we do a lot of, like, with regard to the conflict minerals, they need to be classified based on, you know, what's there, you know, there's tantalum and cobalt, and those are elements on the periodic table, so it's a way for them to see, oh, that's how you can, you know, the periodic table can be used to help identify these minerals, and it, 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 there's a lot of connections that require so, a, the teacher. So, I mean, Montgomery County is very rich with people who have had technical backgrounds. I suspect that you could you would welcome some more volunteers? Oh, absolutely. How, do um, we, how, does, how does somebody sign up for this program? Well, um, every summer we do a recruitment drive where we bring volunteers and teachers into our program. Um, the thing is that um, we have recently got buy-in from over 30 elementary school principals who are interested in getting a volunteer. Unfortunately, we placed all our volunteers so we need some more in September. We absolutely need some more volunteers. So do you have I'd a web website that the people yes, can? Yes, um, they can go to seniorscientist.org. Senior scientist is one word, seniorscientist.org, uh -huh. and they'll get a lot more information about our program. We have a number of video clips uh, on there of actually volunteers in the classroom. Um, are you on there? Yes, uh, I'm on there as well. Yes. <laughs> and looking back over the, you've been doing this now for a number of years, are, are, there, are there any student or students that's experience that you that sort of rings a bell and that was really Yeah, rewarding. yeah. I mean, you know, you often wonder where you, whether you're getting to the students because you do this and I believe it's work and the teacher believes it, but the bottom line is you know, are the students getting anything from it? I, I, I know mine are really enthusiastic when they come, oh, it's Mr. Thomas, uh, or yeah. if he doesn't come in, oh, uh, it's not Mr. Thomas. You know, they, they, so well, that's a, a good sign. There's a, yeah, there's a relationship a there, too, that, you but know. I had an email two weeks ago from one of my students who is now at the University of Delaware, and he said, he remembered I gave a talk about fracking and nuclear energy, and he asked me if I could send him the presentations because he was doing a project uh, in college, so wow. uh, you know that, mean, that means that's, a lot to that's me. That's the real world. <laughs> it is. I mean, that's the real world. You know, so to me, yeah. that was uh, you, that endorsed what we do. Yeah. Well, it, it sounds like a very. I mean, you read about nationally what's going on. We we have a shortage of 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 talented students wanting to get into science, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and we we don't compete nationally and internationally that well. Well, and that's true. I mean, a recent study that came out a couple of weeks ago, um, which was the PISA study, showed that the U.S. is just middle of the pack in science and math. We're in a, in a, a study of over 65 um, you know, global countries. We came 32nd in math uh, and 29th in science. So we, we need programs like this. Right. Yeah, yeah, but we do. And I think it's important that um, uh, it you know, gives the students an awareness of how important science is. And for maybe volunteers that might feel reluctant, they haven't been, maybe they've been out of the science uh, field for a while, not to be concerned about that so much as the, it's like the relationship, it's their sharing their experiences of solving problems when, when it was, you know, when they were younger. Um, that always is very engaging. For it students. sounds like you have a great partnership at Sherwood High School. We yeah. do. We enjoy right. it. Yeah, Thanks very do. much for coming in. Okay, oh, thank you, program. Austin. Thanks for the invite. Thank you. When we come back, we'll devour a topic that will interest anyone with a sweet tooth. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's your chance to save money and help the environment. Bring your reusable bag when you shop and you'll save five cents for every store bag you don't need. Retailers in Montgomery County charge five cents for the plastic or paper bags they provide. Why? Because plastic bags are the biggest single source of stream and waterway litter, causing pollution and flooding. And every year, Montgomery County spends $3 million on cleanup. So do yourself and the environment a favor. Bring your reusable bag when you shop. You'll fight litter and keep the change. Welcome back to Seniors Today. What if you could take classes from a pastry chef trained in Paris right here in Montgomery County? In fact, you can. And I'm very pleased to have Paula Shoya, who is a chef, an author, an editor of the Kosher Baker Cookbook, and the owner of Paula's Parisian Pastries Cooking School in Chevy Chase. Well, welcome to Seniors Today. Welcome, especially with what you brought. 
Well, it's, isn't it great to always have a guest who actually brings yeah, snacks? I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, sampling it. How did you get, I think there's a history here of how you got to being a pastry chef, because somewhere I read that you were a pre-med student. Well, I started off college pre-med, and then I ended up in law school after a chemistry accident. Wow. I had a bad day in the chemistry lab and decided it was a sign from God that that was not my destiny. So law was looming in front of you. So I went to a law school at AU in D.C. Mm -hmm. and practiced environmental and insurance litigation for four years. And then my husband's work sent us to Geneva, Switzerland. And I continued ah. to work in the legal field for two more years. But the food in Geneva. But the food. So I was enjoying all the pastries of Europe, and I really wanted to learn how to bake them myself, especially as a kosher person, because kosher people don't mix milk and meat. So we look for dairy-free desserts after meals, and everything in Europe is just wonderfully full of butter and cream. Right, right. So when I went to pastry school in Paris and learned how to make French pastries, I then changed them into all dairy-free recipes so I could eat them at my my holiday and Shabbat tables. So what do we have here? So what we have here is I've moved in a little bit of a healthier direction with some of my desserts. This is a sugar-free mm. pumpkin bread. It's made with agave and it's got spelt flour and white whole wheat flour, so it's good for you. Mm. And then over here I have babka bites. These are dairy-free. And I try to take traditional mm. Jewish recipes and make them more contemporary. And the mini craze is pretty big right now, so I have these mini little chocolate babkas. Delicious. And then these are the perfect muffin for breakfast because they have walnuts inside and zucchini. So it's vegetable, protein, and oh, well, amazing I eat dark chocolate. For breakfast. I have to try this. Then you have to try this. It definitely has sugar in it, but no white flour either. Mm. So I try to make desserts right, for everybody who's on any kind of diet possible. So whether you're gluten free or sugar free or or nut free. Desserts are labeled in the book, so this book has labels that tell you if it's vegan or nut free or sugar free or gluten free. And then this book is all dairy free. So I try to make sure there's something for everybody because you know what? Everybody deserves a great dessert no matter what diet they're on. So I think you, oh, you, you when you uh, were learning about this, you went to a the Ecole de Gastronomie Française. Nicely done. So yes, I went to the Ritz Escoffier School in, Pace, in Paris just for fun. I wasn't even looking for a new career. And I will tell you that, and you said you had gone to law school, that pastry school was way more fun than law school. Well, I, we, we lived in Paris for a couple of years, and my wife went to the Cordon Bleu School. My concern was her French wasn't very good. <laughs> and was she going to get the recipe right? Was your French? So our, our program was in French and translated uh, into English. Uh, uh, in fact, one of my weeks, the chocolate week, everyone in the class was Japanese, and the people in that class didn't speak French or English, and they still learned how to make chocolate. So you, you do some teaching here. Where, where is that? So I teach classes in my home in Chevy Chase, and I teach kids as, early, as young as three, and I've had people in my kitchen as old as 85 learning how to make chocolate babka. Oh. So I do birthday parties, bridal showers, special occasions, offices, team building you know, programs. And I think I read somewhere that uh, back in your his personal history, you, you had a grandmother who lived a long time. Did she, was, she, was she a pastry chef? So my grandmother was not a pastry chef. In fact, she would say to me, you go to pastry school to learn how to bake a cake? You just bake a cake. So she <laughs> thought it was kind of silly. Uh -huh. But she baked her whole life, and she inspired my baking. And the great kind of full circle story about my grandmother is that I teach baking I do baking programs for Jewish organizations and synagogues around the country and the world. I was even in Hong Kong, China about two months ago teaching wow. Jewish baking in China. But back in Brooklyn, my grandmother had this great kitchen and you know she, she taught me how to bake. Years later, I got called by a synagogue in Brooklyn that's now located in my grandparents' house. So I taught a baking class standing in the very kitchen where my grandmother taught oh, me to that's bake. So, neat. so it's just an amazing coincidence. So uh, these recipes then are, if somebody was la wanted lactose free, would that be, would that? So this book is entirely dairy free. Dairy so free. it's 160 dairy free desserts, and but uh, people do so make these desserts with butter too. Somebody who is lactose intolerant. Right, so this is perfect for them because I, there's so many great dairy free substitutes. Out. And then this book is about 90% dairy free, and it has a dairy chapter because it's organized by Jewish holidays. So we have one Jewish holiday where we eat dairy. And I went a little crazy in that chapter with French desserts, which was fun. What is the, uh, as you go around, what is, what is the biggest demand for people want to know? People want to know how to make tarts and pies. People are afraid to make pie dough and tart dough. So I do a lot of Thai pie and tart classes throughout yeah. the year, usually before Thanksgiving, but yeah. also in the summertime. Well, that's great. Um, so uh, 
You have a website that people can can get information about your classes and yes, they can find me at thekosherbaker.com. Right now, that's the blog, but that's uh -huh. soon to be a bigger website with lots more recipes and information. Oh, there'll about be how recipes on that. Too. Oh, there's there's food and dessert recipes, so not oh. just dessert. So oh. you can find great recipes there, and you can also find all kinds of stories about my life and my family, but oh. wonderful recipes and baking tips. So wow. I really want people to bake. It's so much healthier to bake at home than to buy desserts in bakeries. Um, and, and how did you get to teach in Hong Kong? How did that oh, that was an amazing story. One of my friends, her husband works for the Wall Street Journal. They sent him to be the correspondent in Hong Kong. She goes to a Friday night dinner at somebody's home and sees my cookbook, The Kosher Baker, on this woman's shelf, and then she served for dessert in China, my carrot cake. So they got to talking, and she mentioned that I travel the world teaching baking classes, and that's how I ended up going well, to China. Well, what you've had a rather rich, and varied life. What's up next? Oh, I don't know. I'm always <laughs> open to different possibilities. I feel like I'm always just getting started. Yeah. I may be writing a Passover menu book. I'm uh -huh. waiting to find out about that. And then since I'm moving in a healthier direction, I'm thinking of an all-natural kosher baker book, and I would really love to explore the desserts of the Middle East a little bit more. Wow. I just love to create, so I'll, I'll create desserts. Well, I, I think the rest topic. of the program will just eat. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, thank you so much. It's great to be here. When we return, we'll conclude today's show with an overview of the Commission on Aging's special study group findings and recommendations on the ever-expanding issue of caregiving. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. Have you ever parked illegally in a reserved, accessible parking space? And thought, what's the harm? I'm only going to be a minute. We know how important it is to have reserved parking. And the adjacent stripe access aisles provide necessary space needed for assistance devices like my wheelchair and my service dog. Respect the need for reserved parking and the laws that govern its use. On behalf of everyone with accessible plates and placards, we are asking you to respect the space. Welcome back to Seniors Today. The County's Commission on Aging serves as an advocate for the health, safety, and well-being of the county's older residents. Made up of a number of committees, members also form special study groups during the summer to focus on specific issues regarding seniors. One of those studies focused on the issues of caregiving. And joining me to tell us more are the co-chairs of the Commission's Health and Wellness Committee, Tammy Duell and Dr. Revathi Vikram. Well, welcome to Seniors Today. Thank you. So you had a, a very vigorous study this summer. What was the, why, 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 why was the study done? Well, the Commission on Aging Senior Health and Wellness Committee focuses on issues that are important to seniors, to their health and their well-being in Montgomery County. Uh, and an issue that kept coming up again and again was caregiving and the need for more information and support for caregivers in the county. So we decided to focus, um, uh, do a more intense focus on this over the summer and we invited national and local experts to talk about caregiving uh, and then we developed some recommendations for future action. So Rev, what did you learn? Well, we learned uh, that there are a lot of family caregivers uh, who we don't know about, they don't get all the information. Um, especially we learned that despite all the resources that are available in the, in the county, people don't know about them. And so information communication is a major issue, a problem area. Caregivers, we have something like 200,000 Yeah, how do we people, define, you know? who is a caregiver? How do we define that? Well, we focused on family caregivers, so if you're providing assistance for a cam family member with shopping, doctor's appointments, medications, mm -hmm. maybe telephone check-ins, um, services and, and supports that you weren't providing in the it past. Could, it could be a child, or it could, could be, be a, a, child. a sibling, or it could be a parent Right, yeah. people are often yeah. caring for yeah. their aging spouses or their mm -hmm. adult children are caring for their parents, and many of them are baby boomers. They have young children of their own. They might be working full time, so there are a lot of challenges. It's very rewarding to be a caregiver, but there also are a lot of challenges and unmet needs. And well, Rev, you actually are a caregiver. <laughs> yes, I am. I. Uh, I'm a caregiver to both uh, an 89-year-old mother-in-law and an 85-year-old mother. Wow. And the challenges for me, uh, coming from a different uh, culture, are the lack of, of resources and uh, 
the even identifying oneself as a caregiver becomes that an issue. Be, it's an issue in your culture. It's an issue because that's just what you do. Yeah, and yeah. the guilt that comes from seeking help or the feeling of failure. So that that's a community we want to reach as well because Montgomery County is a very diverse very, community. Exactly. And we want them to know that we have resources and you don't need to feel guilty about reaching for them. S so what are some of the resources that are um, well, there are many resources that um, are, there's no cost involved. For example, a support group. Um, also, just seeking help from a friend or other family members. There are medical adult day centers where um, the individual you're caring for could go and have some meaningful activities, give you a little bit of respite care, a break to relax or get some other errands done. Um, there are financial counselors, elder care attorneys, um, geriatric care manager. So there's a whole host of services that you can use as a caregiver to really build a team so you can make sure your needs are being met and you're caring for yourself as well as caring for the individual that needs that needs how do you How do we find, uh, I mean, the mm -hmm. financial person, how, mm -hmm. I mean, how do we, there's a, you've listed quite a bit there. Right, right. I mean, maybe if you went to a support group, would they, would, they uh, would... Uh, absolutely. A support group could certainly um, uh, you could hear what other people have done, what's worked for mm -hmm. them. They might make recommendations or referrals. Yeah. Also, there are the county, Montgomery County, has a resource line that you can call for various services. If you describe your situation, they might they'll tell you what services can help you. Um, there are w certainly websites, um, a as well as the Alzheimer's Association has information mm -hmm. about support groups. There are many adult day programs in the county that can give you information about what type of support you might need and, and refer you to other resources. And as you said, you know, the Alzheimer's support group, there are disease-specific uh, yeah. support groups yeah. so if someone is dealing with a specific mm -hmm. ailment and their uh, person they're caring for, they can get the support and resources. Is there, uh, a, is there a website that, uh, the, um, or well, are there multiple websites? There are a couple yeah. of multiple. websites. Um, one, I have a couple here. The National Family Caregiver Alliance uh, is a great website at www.caregiver.org. Uh, AARP also has a oh, caregiving resource center. Good, yeah. And that website is www.aarp.org. And then there are two telephone numbers which are great for uh, services and referrals. Montgomery County's resource line, which is 240-777-3000. And the Alzheimer's Association helpline is 1-800-272-3900. And that's staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. The Montgomery wow. County line also you can get the family a caregiver brochure which lists all these and uh, that's uh, available yeah. free and calling that. Uh, the brochure out. has all that in it. Yeah. That has all that in it. As well as resource guides, yes. transportation is yeah. another issue. I mean yes. there are many v different services that different people need depending on their situation. But you identified one that is becoming more challenging. That's the diversity of the language yes. and, right. and the cultural areas and how we, right. how we need to uh, work on that. Yes. yes, absolutely, and yes. translation of some of the, the resource materials into other languages is planned. Um, and, and perhaps reaching out to where they, uh, they would be able to get those brochures, maybe faith-based organizations or their Libraries. restaurants, uh, shopping, ethnic mm -hmm. stores where they may be able to re get that information. The libraries are now setting aside a section for information uh, for seniors, so that's that's helpful. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, if I remember correctly, the, the importance of advanced planning. What Say a yes. word about that. Uh, well, I think it's, it should start, that the planning should start even as young as maybe someone in their 40s and 50s because they're going to be caregivers at some point mm -hmm. for their parents. Mm -hmm. um, so just to have some ideas of how to go about it mm -hmm. and uh, learning more about the resources. Mm -hmm. And another area where they can get this information would be in your doctor's office or mm -hmm. the hospital at discharge mm -hmm. so that you can become integrated into that system and learn more about it. So That's the, the first. The commission is going to continue to work on this. We're just about out of time. Okay. Uh, this this winter, you're going to continue. Yes. We are having a stakeholders meeting actually on February, caregiving. On caregiving. caregiving. In February. We welcome and we're, we're also revising the family caregiver brochure. That's, yes. so. that's, that's terrific. And we want people who are caregivers to come, not you right. know, just any family member can come yes. to that meeting. Well, thanks for all that information. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Thanks very much.
Don't forget that you can access a great deal of information about county services for seniors by going to the Montgomery County Senior website at www.montgomerycountymd.gov forward slash seniors or call the Senior Resource Line at 240-777-3000. Also, we have an email address that you can use to send us comments or suggestions for future topics on our show. It's seniors today at montgomerycountymd.gov. And as always, thank you for watching Seniors Today. Thank you.